I got a new Keychron in the mail. Oh my god. This thing is chonky. It's also got one of the most unique layouts I've seen in a while. And this is how it sounds stuck. To be honest, this thing sounds pretty darn good, but I know we can make this sound better. I tried taking it apart, realized that I didn't have a hex key, ran down to the garage, found something that would work. The world just doesn't want me to open the keyboard, but I'm gonna do it anyway. Oh, this has its own tape mod already. It already has tape mod done to it. And there's pads between the top and bottom of the case that is basically acting as force break mod. <laughs> I took this thing apart for nothing. I had an existential crisis. What the hell am I supposed to do on this YouTube channel if not mod the keyboards? But then I remembered that I'm an idiot and the stabilizers on keychron boards are just not very great. Keepfront came in and saved my tuchus by giving me some keepfront stabbers to put in this board. To get to the stabilizers, you have to take out all the Gateron Pro Browns, which are basically Gateron Browns with a very bad factory lube job. I really don't understand why Keychron doesn't offer options for way better Gateron switches. What is stopping you from offering Gateron Black Inks? CJs? Azure Dragons? Obviously it would be a premium, but I'm sure people would pay for it. So after getting the Browns out, I was able to take apart the plate and the PCB. Since we're replacing those bad Gateron Pro Browns, what switch are we gonna put in this board? You know, since we're already using Keepfront stabbers and those are in stock now, I figured I would also show you guys the Keepfront honeycombs, which are also going to be in stock. Here's the specs of the honeycombs, but let me tell you, the best thing about these switches is that they're factory looped, which means that this is going to be the most effortless build I think I've ever done. I think this is a better factory lube job than the Invokey's matcha lattes, so you know it's quality. There's something magical about describing keyboard build as effortless. A little side note I want to make. I'm actually an owner of the second version of the Keychron Q1, which includes the knob. One of my main aesthetic gripes about this board is that the knob is like a disjointed little module instead of being a part of the top case. That's where this board shines because it is integrated into the top case. Look how good it looks. One downside about this board, the keycaps are not only ugly, but they sound bad and they feel cheap. You know what's an amazing set of keycaps? PVT Taro by good old P. Wade. Come on, it's gorgeous, you guys. Other than the existential crisis that this board gave me, if you're looking for this specific weird layout, this is probably it. It's a part of the Q series, so you know exactly what you're getting into. The build is really solid and it looks good. Once you upgrade the keycaps, stabilizers, and switches, you've got a really solid board, even if you didn't do any mods to it. So yeah, I guess I'm just gonna go reconsider my choice to become a keyboard YouTuber. There you go, gamers. I don't really know what else to say about this board. So uh, like, subscribe, and don't be a stranger.